we are rolling. Are we ready to roll? Yeah. So uh, we do the welcome. Yeah, as always. Yeah. So welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Badminton Experience. Um, we have once again. Uh, I think we have been strong with the guests the last few episodes, and we have a very, very good uh, guest today. Um, it's like Jason. Thank you so much for for coming, brother. How are you? Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Yeah. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm uh, very good. I don't know about Hans Christian. I'm very good. Very good. Having like two world class <laughs> players here, it's just amazing for me. I just sit here as a uh, like very humble guy, as a spectator. just listening to all your uh, great, great uh, thoughts on badminton. So I'm excited. So uh, yeah, I'm excited too. Um, first of all, when I asked Lakshya to 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 come on the podcast, I asked if he had if he had seen some of the episodes, um, if he even knew what it was. Mm. He actually said that he's been watching almost every one of them. So uh, I already like that's it so, uh, much, that's so much. <laughs> I like it so that's, much. That, that's, what, that's amazing. No, I've seen mo- uh, most of them. Uh, yeah. And yeah, especially in Bali, I started following because I think you, that, that time you guys came up with a lot of uh, episodes where the players were there. But yeah, I knew, I knew this before. I think you did one with Shrikant as well, long back. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I I did one. that. That was back on my own YouTube channel. I was just trying to figure out, like, what I wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, I was doing vlogs, and then I also wanted to do maybe some podcast okay. or interview type stuff. And then I I only did one. I called it the AA show. <laughs> and Wasn't I did, great. I did, I did one with uh, with Shrikant. But this is much better though. Yeah, but um, I really think on Bali was when we got like a breakthrough also yeah. with the podcast and people starting taking notice and stuff but it was like on bali everything went crazy on social media right yeah i think just before leaving for bali three days before the instagram was just booming it was crazy people were just following you random people and no without names or like first we thought is it uh are these like bots or yeah, what yeah. but mm. then those were like indonesian fans yeah. mm. just following you it, it was quite weird actually why it happened like it happened for everyone who was going there yeah, but yeah. it wasn't like anyone was trying to like really post a lot you didn't have to do anything basically you just yeah. got an enormous amount of followers yeah I, but uh, maybe it's kind of like the same um you know, we talk about why all the arenas was just f- filled with people here during the mm-hmm. summer tournaments. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think our answer is just like the fans was just eager to finally get some badminton again and get us out playing and stuff. So when we returned to Indonesia for the first time in a long time, I guess, they were just like fired up to finally see us back again. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, think that, that could be the reason. Uh, no, but we had a few good guests on there. Yeah. And uh, that's where we like. But maybe this is the first time we have a fan of the show as a guest. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the other guest is no. really watching the uh, the episodes. Um, but no, we had Pranoy on. But you're you're our our second Indian guest. It's uh, it's, it's good. An honor. Yeah, it's a, it's an honor to have you here. So, uh, you just arrived to Denmark. Yeah. How was the how was the trip? Yeah, the trip was long and yeah, a bit tiring, but yeah. Once we uh, came to the hotel, the hotel rooms were amazing, <laughs> amazingly, <laughs> amazingly yeah. small. Yeah, amazingly <laughs> small. Uh, uh, just explain why you're staying in hotel cabin. I, I guess it it was just a last moment booking, uh, okay. and then the, all the other official hotels were all booked. So okay. then they had to move us here. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I think uh, in a two people room, I think uh, we are staying a single person staying right now. So okay. it's still okay, still okay uh, to survive. It somebody. makes it a little bit better because yeah. cabin is really not like a very uh, like luxurious hotel in no. Denmark <laughs> for by any means. Like I think it's one of the cheapest hotel mm-hmm. chains, right? Mm. They have hotels all over the big cities, but small rooms. It's quite noisy as well, actually. Also, so it's oh. like it's. Is Cabin only in Denmark or is it uh, like in... Yeah, I don't know if it's an Europe? international chain. I don't okay. know, actually. I've seen it in Denmark only. Yeah. Like okay. A few other places in Denmark. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I think but yeah, they try to keep the price down from price. making the room smaller. And yeah. yeah and then so. it says you can only sleep inside. You cannot keep the bags. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have to keep leave the bags outside and go in and sleep. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's really? That, that small. 
So you have the bags outside of the room? No, no, no. I'm uh, just kidding. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually <laughs> bought that one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just saw. I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> I, we need to. We need to cut that out. Oh, like, no. that's, I'm too naive. I okay. um, <laughs> I saw Pano's Instagram story. He was supposed to share with Srikant yeah. and it was extremely like a very very tiny room. But you changed now, so you have one room. We have one room for each of us. For each of the players. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I actually rented a house this time. Uh, wow. Yeah, with Airbnb. Wow. But I also have my mom and my son with me, so yeah. we needed a bit of space. This hotel is not fully booked at all. No. This is a uh, this is quite nice, like yeah. real right. traditional Danish uh, style, quite cozy. Bit old school. Yeah, we were just talking about uh, your new tattoo. Okay. <laughs> Before we went on the, on the, uh, did you see his new tattoo? Yeah, yeah, on the neck, yeah. right? Yeah. It says uh, now, now of course, uh, the the viewers can't see it, but it says, uh, "Sky is the limit." Sky is oh. the limit. Yeah, it's oh, two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. How was it to get like tattooed up <clears throat> here? Uh, I feel all the other tattoos which I did on the hand or uh, like in the shoulder it doesn't hurt much but mm. it takes a lot of time because the area is bigger yeah. but then this one it was hurting like bitch okay, <laughs> okay. but then uh, yeah it was only for 10 10 15 minutes so oh. yeah it was still okay yeah. but th- but then yeah this area all the sensitive areas it hurts a lot yeah. but then yeah it was quick so yeah. how many tattoos do you, do you have by now i think i have five six by now Okay. Are you d- are you done now or are you gonna have more? I am not sure, but yeah. I'll definitely get few more. Yeah. But I'm not sure when yeah. and what. Yeah. So, when when did you get your first tattoo? I think two and a half years back or something. Okay. Uh, just after COVID, I was like, I have to get it now. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Do you, do you have like a the same guy you go to every time? Yeah, yeah. I have I have the I go to the same place. They have like uh, seven eight people over there. Okay in Bangalore but yeah I have n- now I have a guy who does it for me every time and yeah. then uh, I have to like and he designs also sometimes for me uh, re- mm-hmm. like relating to the other tattoos and then so that it can like link to the other tattoo which are close by and then make it look like, mm. uh, like the same similar, similar style, similar style. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. is is there is there like a, a style that you're aiming for I mean I remember Yan uh, our former colleague he had like this Japanese theme i feel like some of the tattoos were yeah most of them but he has a lot so yeah he has he a lot but, but yeah i would agree he had like a japanese style theme yeah. in general but uh, is there something like that no or? i think uh, the first three two three tattoos that i did was like very random mm. uh, whatever just came into my mind and uh, i just did but now now uh, looking back on what i did not very proud of my first and second mm. tattoo but right. then yeah uh, now i'm trying to like uh, like Put it all together and then mm-hmm. maybe see if 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 I can get a whole hand done yeah. in okay. like the whole arm. Maybe maybe wow. in few years. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that it must be cool. it must be quite quite like nerve wracking to get a tattoo up here. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. so visible all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you put a lot of like a lot thi- of thinking yeah. in or? Yeah, a lot of thoughts on uh, the neck and especially the wrist area as well because that is the uh, part where it's most visible when mm. I'm playing or mm. even otherwise. So yeah, all my tattoos have been up till the shoulder where I can yeah. like wear a t-shirt and it's n- no more visible. But yeah, yeah th- all these tattoos I have to give it a lot, uh, yeah. thought a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Are your parents like just completely okay with tattoos? I was just tattoos? about to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Not like my mom, she would be crazy if I uh, got one on that was visible on the uh, on the neck for sure yeah i think uh, in the beginning they were like what is this what are you doing (laughs) (laughs) but then yeah now uh, they're okay with it and uh, yeah yeah, they're like just do whatever you want you didn't ask like mom is it okay that i said (laughs) they they would probably say no for yeah if i asked so i just got it just don't ask yeah (laughs) it's a better tactic for sure for sure as soon as you're 18 you can decide for yourself yeah so you can do it as well I'm sure. I'm sure your mom I'm, would I'm also. I'm 25 by it. now. I would. I would. I mean, my mom would uh, cr- cry like yeah. forever yeah. If, if I got a tattoo. <laughs> She's yeah. so so afraid of me doing uh, something crazy, uh, which I I like which tattoos. I, understand, I mean, yeah. I, I think tattoos are pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I I sure. often see tattoos and I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What I'm afraid of is uh, regretting. Mm. A, a tattoo if if i got one tattoo i would be so afraid of like regretting it in a few years and be like damn now i'm stuck with this thing on my arm or something like that 
you don't think about that at all or? no i feel it's part of my body now and then whatever decisions i made back then i think i was th- at that time i felt it right so i did it and yeah yeah that's cool. a good no way no, no regrets that. no it's cool yeah. i like though you should get that tattooed as well no regrets okay. mm. like, <laughs> <laughs> like like on your chest probably that i'll regret <laughs> <laughs> yeah then don't do it <laughs> I remember actually the first time I saw you it was uh, in England uh at this small tournament um Wimbledon Wimbledon exactly it was like was it like a under 19 tournament or something but well, you were very young at the time right yeah so the first year when I played I was like 13 13 or 14 so I was there for uh training in denmark uh, training in england sorry uh, mm-hmm. and uh, then playing one another two two tournaments like swiss and then belgium after that so yeah i played that tournament that time you won and yeah. one of my other seniors were there i was playing doubles with him and then that guy reached the fin- semi finals against you yeah semi final final his name was like latala Lata, 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 yeah okay so yeah latala 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 Lata. Lata. Yeah. I think ah, he, I, I think, think he's he, in Denmark. He's actually. in Denmark yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. Is he yeah. living in Denmark now? I don't know but he played for a club called Lillerød okay. for some time now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, how much older are you than Lasse? I'm from 97 and you are from 2001. Okay, I'm so four years. Okay. <coughs> so you should also be able to beat him at that time. I didn't I didn't play it against no, Lakshya. No. Yeah, you played against the other guy. The but other guy but he won the tournament yeah, he, then Lakshya probably did. He is the s- so. same age same age as him. Yeah. Oh, I just so. remember like uh, someone was talking about there's this very very young guy from India mm-hmm. uh in in the tournament. I I saw you play a little bit. Uh I think you played against uh, Ditlev, right? I don't remember no. the names, but yeah, I I played one or two rounds and then I lost. Okay, and then, yeah. yeah. I was just watching the matches and yeah playing doubles with the other guy we so need to ask Titlio he's one of the guys we spar with in oh. the national center because if he like lost to you when you were 13 we no meet, we i think Titlio actually oh, beat okay. it like okay. if i'm okay. if i'm not mistaken okay. but i'm i'm not 100% sure about that no but but so, so you you have been like traveling qu- quite a lot mm. i mean uh, you you also been in denmark living right yeah, yeah. for for a small uh, amount of time right yeah so yeah i think from a very young age uh, my coaches and uh, like prakash sir and vimal kumar sir who is my coach so they wanted me to go to different places learn from different kind of players like pl- get that exposure at a very young age so i remember when i was just 11 or 12 they had sent me to indonesia for a month okay and with my dad my brother and and i was training there and then again after some time they would send me to denmark or like england to train and then play some tournament mm. and then a lot of this kind of exposure they gave me at a very young age so that uh, i get used to it and and yeah so that's how i'm i've been uh, training uh, and yeah i've lived in denmark also mm. Uh, when i was working with morten sir and i was yeah. uh, living here for three months did you always travel with your brother and father or did you travel alone also sometimes so like when you were in denmark you didn't have anyone with you did you or yeah that time i think it's different because the, the first time when i went then that time th- my brother and my dad was there but then otherwise i would also travel alone sometimes okay. or travel with some other coach or players yeah. so like when i was staying in uh Denmark for three months. I was there with other like three, four players mm-hmm. who were there with me and playing tournaments from here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's quite interesting. Then you must also have been uh, experiencing lots of different ways of training, because yeah. we we spoke to some of the previous guests about that as well. There's like a very Asian style and a more like European style. Yeah. You must have been doing both, right? Yeah. Is is there one you prefer over the other? Like, what what would you prefer if you had to make your own training? <coughs> yeah. Uh, I would say mix of both okay. uh, but then yeah uh, whatever you uh, whatever I train I just try to uh, give my best mm-hmm. and uh, but yeah I always uh, prefer that the asian kind of training where we go long and long for hours I think that training we can uh, do it probably in off season where we don't have many tournament but then uh, once the tournament comes and like we have less less time to like train and mm. get ready so i think that small periods of uh, training where uh, we just change in every 2 minutes 3 minutes i think the intensity goes up and yeah. then the sparring is uh, a little bit better so mm. 
आई फील अ मिक्स ऑफ बोथ बट आई वुड से इन द इन द टूर्नामेंट सीजन लाइक वी प्ले ऑलमोस्ट एवरी टू थ्री वीक्स वी प्ले अ टूर्नामेंट टू थ्री टूर्नामेंट्स आई आई प्रिफर द यूरोपियन काइंड ऑफ ट्रेनिंग Uh, much more than the long hours yeah, of yeah. just playing yeah. it makes good sense uh, the question is always uh, when we ask our guests is which one do you prefer mm. but i guess that's a good answer like yeah mix there is a time for for for, for every way uh, yeah. um um yeah it it makes really good sense the one thing that i'm struggling with a little bit with uh with your way of practicing where you maybe go like half an hour let's say you do two against one you'll go like half an hour and then the next one goes oh. half an hour and then the next one goes half an hour it's just then you end up like being the the feeder yeah. like the, in the sparring role for for an hour straight and that's you don't you stand a little bit more still yes. there it's a little bit like yeah. you don't really get to work so that i just feel like that's a it's a long time to be like a, like the feeder but um but do you do that a lot because in, in the where you're training in Bangalore like you're the main focus right so yeah. the other guys are sparring for you but you're not so much sparring for them I yeah know. so whenever i'm doing that kind of training long i i like do it very less like maybe once a week or okay. other other tra- days we have like one one minute rallies or like two two minutes we change okay. but then yeah when when i i do that uh, probably there will be one feeder who mm-hmm. just there to feed mm. like an indonesian guy or like some other yeah. feeder and then maybe some other player who is just sparring with you maybe you go you go for 20 minutes and then there is a break then you go mm. again for 20 minutes yeah. so th- that way you don't uh, spend too much time just feeding and yeah. then yeah. It becomes boring or like it becomes very monotonous to like yeah. just keep keep on uh, standing there and mm. playing and then yeah. the interest goes but yeah mostly when we uh, do long ki- long drills i am the one playing and then yeah. the other two guys are just feeding or like three guys are just feeding yeah. okay right. so you are based in bangalore all right yeah. um so who who else is there good men singles so uh, i train with mithun manjunath uh, and then kiran george and then uh, yeah my brother is also there somewhere mm. and then uh, Yeah there are a also few, this guy Luwang uh, yeah Meraba Luwang he, yeah. he was a junior before now he uh, started playing in the senior so yeah i think we have a, a good batch of 5 6 players but yeah uh, for me sometimes uh, the tournament it becomes different because uh, they play 1000 uh, le- uh, like 100 or like mm-hmm. challenge tournaments and then at the same time i am training there and then those mm-hmm. guys are playing tournament so that that time it becomes a little bit difficult for me to uh, yeah. sp- train there all the time so in between i try to go and train in dubai as well with victor and loki new so yeah. i have a good change uh, in yeah. training but i guess if you also al- always been used to like traveling around and yeah. train in different places it it must like be just normal for you actually yeah. to do it this way still because if you've been doing it since you were 11 it's kind of just the way you do things right yeah i think I don't think there's anyone really similar to this that's been like so no. used to going to different environments all the no. time. No, you could say Lakshya has been like independent for uh, for his so. whole his whole career or something <laughs> like that <laughs> sort of. Sort um of. you just mentioned that uh, you've been in Dubai a few times. Uh how's how's that been? You how how often have you been there? Uh the first time I went after the lockdown just happened and then the tournaments were just starting. So Yeah, I think that time it really helped me because I was just training in Bangalore and travel restrictions and all were there. Mm-hmm. So nothing I could I was not looking up to anything uh, at that point of time. We we were just training, training mm-hmm. and then uh, yeah, I think I got this opportunity to train with different kind of players and then I think uh, it was like a good pre-season training where uh, I could get that match intensity that mm-hmm. one versus one intensity just before getting into the tournament so yeah. yeah i think that way it helped me uh, it helped me a lot i guess the spying was also okay with the uh, local yeah, <laughs> more, more, more than yeah. okay <laughs> yeah. i think that's a pretty good setup with those two and you and yeah. the uh, i think lee chuk yu has been there as well right yeah lee chuk yu yeah, yeah. and then brian yang and brian yang yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a, brian it's, yang it's, it's been a, a while since i have uh, seen brian yang yeah I think he's coming for the European tournaments. Yeah, yeah I just met him at the airport. Oh, he oh, just okay, came yeah. in the same bus. Yeah. Yeah. Good player as well. Yeah, how, 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 sure. how 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 did did you like learn anything from training with Victor and Law in Dubai? Did you bring something home with you like how was like the overall experience? 
आई थिंक कॉन्फिडेंस वाइज आई थिंक ट्रेनिंग विद द ओलंपिक चैम्पियन एंड लाइक वॉचिंग हिम टेक केयर ऑफ हिम सेल्फ ऑन एंड ऑफ द कोर्ट एंड हाउ प्रोफेशनली इज अबाउट द स्पोर्ट आई थिंक दैट वॉज द बिगेस्ट लर्निंग फॉर मी बिकॉज या आई हैव नेवर सीन अ टॉप गाय लाइक I train in Bangalore, and then there is there are not many seniors, senior mm-hmm. players or uh, players to look up to. So yeah, I think uh, that way uh, I really learned a lot uh, by seeing him, uh, mm-hmm. how he trains, how he takes care of himself, and uh, yeah. Now you say there's not a lot of guys to look up to in Bangalore. Did you ever consider uh, going to Hyderabad, where all the other guys are? Because in that way you would have like more guys to maybe yeah. look up to and get some inspiration from so like what what is the reason why you are you're still in bangalore and not together with the other guys uh i think uh, from a very young age uh i i trained in bangalore and then uh i think there are, are you born there or no no okay. uh, i i was born in uh, almoda uh, uttarakhand north of india where close to delhi i would say okay and then uh, yeah when i was 9 9 and a half then i shifted to bangalore okay to train uh, yeah. and then my family was still living in uh, my hometown where okay. i come i come from a very uh, small place and it's a hilly area as cold as this, as cold as denmark okay. in, right. in winters right. so okay. yeah i think uh, yeah for me to shift from uh, that ni- when i was 9 and a half 10 my mm. father sent me and my brother to the prakash padukon academy where all the top athletes were training like yeah. uh, at that time there were uh, like anup shridhar yeah, yeah. and arvin bhat they yeah. they were the players who were still playing in the senior circuit and uh, i think anup bhaiya had just played the olympics as well like in 2008 and then yeah. they all were training here so i think that time uh, i moved to bangalore and then since then uh, they the coaches the uh, vimal sir prakash sir they created an environment uh, there where i, we, I had everything like mm-hmm. f- nutritionist trainers mental trainers everything they okay. provided me there so i think it was a go- good move to yeah. train there and then they would g- give me th- this exposure to train somewhere else train with uh, yeah so yeah, i think i never uh, considered moving into mm-hmm. hyderabad because the because of the uh, i would say the personal attention which i was mm-hmm. getting in bangalore where they would look after everything and then i felt that moving to hyderabad i think i would have to still uh, like they wouldn't give me that much preference because i was still a junior and they had a lot of top mm-hmm. players playing yeah. and uh, at a level where i was still very young so i think i feel that uh, the grooming which happened in the uh, early day i think that uh, helped me to grow up and then yeah i didn't really consider yeah it makes anywhere. it makes great sense for sure you would have to share the attention much more if you move to hyderabad there's yeah. lots of good players this weekend panoy yeah. panit i guess he's probably also there right yeah yeah, yeah so there it makes a lot of sense and bangalore is a nice city right yeah it's so a lot better than place. hyderabad in summers i i feel uh, only for like Two months or one and a half months, it gets very hot. But then throughout the year in Bangalore, the weather is like pleasant. It okay. doesn't uh, go very cold or like go very hot. Very hot. So I think it's uh, the best place to be in okay. India in terms of weather. And then yeah, I think uh, I've been in Bangalore for now eleven years. So I have a lot of things, okay. a lot of. Uh, friends over there and uh, yeah i think yeah, basically your entire life is in bangalore, bangalore so yeah, yeah. How it how would do, be a big you, shift how do you me. live there is it uh, in the training center or no, do you have your uh, own place before th- that um, like before covid uh, i was living in the uh, apartments where uh, the academy had uh, allotted us the place but then it was not inside the training center but we could we had to like uh, go out and stay there but then yeah uh, 2000 18 my family shifted to bangalore okay. uh, completely right. when nice. i became uh, when i started playing in the seniors and i did mm-hmm. well in the juniors because there was there were like 
a lot of other things to look after as well so they like my mom and dad and they were like we have never spent time much time with you guys mm-hmm. because you guys are always away for yeah. training and uh, yeah so they moved to bangalore and since then now uh, i've i've been living with them in an apartment outside the nice. okay. training center i actually i think i read somewhere that your dad used to be your coach but is that not true no he is still my coach oh, okay. uh, and yeah he was a player before he used yeah. to uh play he had played the national not the international level but like okay. nationally he has played a lot of uh, times and if you know sayed modi yeah. uh, mm-hmm. he he used to play with him okay uh, yeah. in in our back place. in the 80s or something yeah like back that, in the yeah. 80s and yeah. then uh, and yeah he uh, so the tournament side modi is named after after yeah, yeah after a guy, him, a guy yeah. who got shot wow yeah, yeah. that's oh. why it's named after him yeah wow crazy Anyway, sorry. so <laughs> so yeah he used to uh, play with them and then he started coaching and uh, as when he, a lot, lot of my cousin brothers and all they used to play badminton he started uh, badminton in uh, almoda uh, where i come from and yep. then my grandfather you also used to play okay. badminton yeah. and uh, football but then he he my grandfather was the one to set up all the facility in my uh, hometown okay. where cool. i come from so uh, i think that's how my father also got introduced to yeah. the sport and then he's still coaching me and then he was my first coach i started okay. playing so is he in the prakash parguna academy sometime yeah he or? joined in 2018 okay. B- before that uh, he was in uh, sports authority of india like yeah. the sai uh coaches like the government uh, okay. approved coaches he yeah. was uh, he had a training center in uh, almoda where, uh, yeah, where I, i i come from okay oh, wow. do you ever go back to your, to your hometown after uh, i mean you have had a great year and we are going to talk about that as well some of your big victories do you go home to your hometown and get like a proper celebration and and stuff or, or how does that work yeah i feel uh, whenever i go back to Uh, my hometown after a, a big tournament uh, the first world championship when i uh, won the bronze i think the, all the people were in roads and they had just <laughs> blocked everything <Yeah. laughs> nice. because it's a really small place so all of them uh, yeah. knew me and then they uh, came to celebrate the victory when i came back home so uh-huh. yeah, i think it's a really good feeling to go back there but then yeah uh, i've been uh, going on and off uh, i, I a lot until like 2018 because mm. my parents were living there and yeah. um, I, i had to meet them also but then now it's a little bit less and maybe few fewer days but yeah, i still go back to my home you, you must be like the most uh, like famous and successful athlete ever from that area i guess yeah if, yeah. It, <laughs> if it's a small <laughs> city then it would be pretty crazy if they yeah. had anyone more you should try successful. to get a statue Yeah. <laughs> statue would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. When you enter the city, like uh, <laughs> it's just a statue of Lakshya there. Yeah, they should just rename the city. <laughs> yeah, like Lakshya Sen city. <laughs> Lakshya Sen. Yeah. Uh, Sen mode. What's Sen oh, mode? Yeah. I wanted to talk about Sen mode. I've seen yeah, you use that a lot on Instagram lately. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've started doing Instagram professionally in like last <laughs> four. <laughs> professionally. professionally, like. <laughs> taking advice from uh, professional people yeah, okay, and okay. Uh, so it's been uh, four five months so they came up with this idea where they uh, but yeah, i think i could relate to it and then i said yeah i think yeah. we should uh, definitely do this and then yeah i think a lot of people also gave it uh, that importance that hashtag is i think really working now mm. yeah it is it is yeah. <laughs> people notice for sure if you keep using it it's yeah. just like we noticed it for yeah. sure yeah sen mode is it's, it's nice i like it yeah. do you have a do, so you have some people helping you with like social media yeah stuff yeah I have like two three people who help me with posting and editing or okay but then yeah uh, are you are you st- are you interested in it yourself so do you like read comments and like do, do yeah, you follow I, the things that are happening on your instagram yeah i re- yeah. read them a lot and yeah. uh, especially after uh, like if you perform well uh, there are a lot of good comments mm-hmm. and then yeah. there is also uh, criticism yeah, a lot of yeah. time but yeah it, I, i'm still learning to yeah. use instagram yeah. and uh, uh, I, i have I have people around me to help but yeah i try to post what i like and yeah. uh, they give me few ideas if i like them i do it otherwise uh, yeah it's just uh, 
i'm trying to put little bit little bit more effort yeah. to connect with the people on instagram and with the fans yeah it's a great idea and it's amazing for the sport as well that the yeah. athletes really take it seriously yeah, yeah. It's very there's good. no doubt there's a lot of power in india we can see that with just if you look at sindhu and sinus uh yeah, yeah. instagram like they're just exploding with followers so it would be amazing to get some of the yeah the male players up male there players, as well yeah. like how, how many followers are you on, on uh, i'm 195 or 194 yeah. So still, there's a little bit way up to up Sindhu. To, I think yeah. she's like 1.3 million. She, she's close to, I think, 3 million or something. Oh, 3, 3 million. Yeah. Or something well, we, 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 we spoke to Pranoy about that. He said that you're like, uh, your fame really like elevates when you do, when you get like an Olympic, Olympic or medal. an Olympic medal, right? Medal, that, yeah. That's the one that yeah, you Yeah, that's leave, the right? one uh, people look for. And uh, not a lot of them, uh, not, not, not a lot of... Uh, sport get get that medal because yeah. I, I think last time we got like six medals and then when pv sindhu won it there were only like two medals so yeah. people look up to uh, uh olympics as like a yeah. uh, big big uh, sport in i think in the world as well uh, yeah. yeah sure they look, but then uh, again if you go to china they have like a lot of people, champions yeah. 100 uh, medalists but then in india we have like two or three or uh, yeah. So I think that way they get a lot of uh, attention in that way. Yeah. It's definitely also where you get, I mean, at the Olympics, I watch sports that I would never usually yeah. watch. Yeah, and I guess sure. that's the same for like a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but so it makes sense that like in India, they haven't won a lot of medals. Mm-hmm. So yeah. obviously like one medal would get more attention. To yeah. 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 I think like even compared to a place like Denmark, because we we actually win a bit more from different sports. I would say in Denmark it makes a big difference mm. if you win a gold or anything else. Mm. It's not like a bronze and a silver is still great. Yeah, but, but yeah. I think it makes a lot of difference if you actually win the gold yeah. in in Denmark in terms of yeah. popularity and stuff like that. Yeah, but I feel. Don't you think that's the same in like all countries? The gold is just super special. Yeah, but I think yeah. it's a little bit more important if you are from a country where you're used to winning every now and then. Because I remember with Makes India, sense. I remember when Saina won the bronze in uh, London. It was a huge deal mm-hmm. uh, because it was one of the first individual medals for yeah. uh, for India. As like and, as and a also uh, like when PV Sindhu won it in. Uh, 2016 it yeah, was really? the uh, highest medal like the silver was the highest medal so we didn't in all even sports get, yeah in all sport okay. we got like two, crazy two for medals. such a big country yeah we got like two medals and then yeah. the highest was silver so i think that that yeah. way uh, she got a lot more yeah. attention and you say country. you won six medals in uh, tokyo I think more more than that i think more seven than eight than. okay, but okay. Yeah. so it's actually really mm. progressing now in yeah. india with the medals uh, it's progressing and we got a gold as well in athletics which was never yeah. uh, the javelin the throw, javelin yeah. throw yeah. 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 people know that? javelin now Nirai Chopra Nirai Chopra, Nirai Chopra. Yeah. Yeah. which, which uh, javelin throw spudkast oh javelin yeah. okay yeah cool. he's quite cool yeah. And he, it's is. Quite, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. He is. Yeah, it's quite uncommon to see on an athletic stadium athletic. an Indian guy. You you've never <coughs> really uh, seen that in the uh, in the finals. We have we, have, we have not got uh, medals from athletics in Olympics. So I think this yeah. was the first. Or yeah. I think the second one was back in eighties or nineties. Okay. So yeah. this was the and it was a gold in athletics. So it yeah. was a big deal for India. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, talk to me about the Commonwealth Games because it's something that me and Hans Christian. Mm. We'll never get to to <laughs> participate in because uh, it's not for us. It's for all the uh, explained. Explain it to me, Hans Christian. <laughs> uh, well, for all the former. Oh, you can explain yeah, it all to the me. former British colonies. Yeah, right? British yeah. Uh, colonies, and then uh, yeah, th- also people uh, look look up to those games as well because it's a multi sporting event, and uh, throughout the that period, all the sports are uh, showing live, and then. There is the whole contingent, same as Olympics, but like way smaller mm. uh, yeah. on the p- countries which which are participating, and it's a little bit easier to get a medal. But yeah, in India, I think people also follow that a lot. Mm. Uh, but then again, we have like sixty people who won medals there, yeah. so it do- it doesn't give that that much uh, mileage to uh, in terms of popularity, no. but but yeah, I think it it's a big event for the government and uh, India. They really uh, support you like anything for those games, yeah, and yeah. they they treated uh, 
like one step uh, lower to the uh, Olympics. But yeah, I think yeah. they gave a lot of mileage to uh, yeah. those games as well. Yeah. And you brought home, uh, you brought home the gold. How was yeah. uh, how was that experience for you? I think uh, before that I didn't play a few tournaments. I was a little bit injured, and then uh, uh, I didn't play for two three uh, weeks before that. But then yeah, once I uh, started playing there, the initial rounds were a little bit easier to uh, to get through. To get through, and then uh, the matches started after quarter quarterfinals, and then semifinals, and then. But yeah, it was a, a different atmosphere where you have this. It's it prepares you like a, a, an Olympic event where there is a village, there is uh, like other uh, players also playing. So I think that way the pressure was a bit more where people are still watching like in India, uh, and then you have to do well in that tournament because you are expected to do well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it was a good. Uh, Good tournament to play, and my first experience. Where it's all, so you, all you see it as an advantage leading up to Paris, the games that you have tried this thing in a village, preparing, yeah, playing at a like big multi sport. Big multi -sport event. Event. Yeah, I would say the same as uh, the Asian games or mm. like the European yeah. games. So. Have it's you played the European game? Uh, the, <laughs> not the European games, the Asian games. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Also, uh, and also not the European games. <laughs> I've played the Youth Olympics. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I got an uh, idea about the atmosphere okay. there as well. Yeah. How did you do at the uh, the Youth Olympics? I got a silver there. Okay. I lost to Li Shi Feng in the finals. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Yeah. So what year was that? Uh, 2018, I would say. Okay. 2018. Have you beaten him since that? Uh, I think I have. I had beaten him three times before that. And <laughs> ah, okay. Ah. I, I lost in the finals. Ah, uh, so yeah, I had a really long match against Kodai uh, okay. in the semi-finals. Mm. So it was like hour and a half. Yeah. I could imagine match. you and Kodai uh, yeah. having a really <laughs> long match where like no one could hit it on the floor. You just keep on defending, getting everything back. And then yeah. that ma that match was twenty four twenty two in the third game. Okay. And, and yeah, yeah a super long match where yeah. uh, <laughs> I couldn't recover well for the finals. No, that makes sense. Who's some of the um, who's some of the the best men singles players uh, around your age? You just uh, mentioned Kodai and Li Feng. Yeah, I would say Kunlawat. Kunlawat, uh, Kunlawat yeah. is he's uh, decent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's amongst the top ten now. So yeah. him and and yeah, Kodai, Li Feng, and also. Uh, I would say uh, Brian Yang also. I think yeah. uh, mm. some it's a pretty good tournament. He was Brian that. good in the in the junior years as well? Yeah, I think uh, he didn't win a lot of them, but he was always there in the qualifiers. Okay. Or, okay. And then the other Malaysian guy, uh, which I played against in the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games, Ng. Yeah. Oh, so Ng. Yeah, Young, yeah. He's also. Yeah. yeah, he's also on the rise now. Yeah, yeah. Again. Did For Indonesia sure. has uh, had had some? Yeah, they had one uh, at that time, but I think he he's not uh, doing well uh, uh, in the senior circuit right now. Okay, yeah. it's oh. quite it's quite. Who was like the in your in your back in your <laughs> junior days? Who in was my junior days, well, for sure the best one is Chen Jin. Chen Jin, yeah, yeah he's yeah. my age. Uh, he won the World Juniors actually already as an under seventeen player, but then he won again in my age group. Okay. And I, I guess he's the only one like of the top top guys, but like Rajiv Usaf is my age as well, so yeah. he's mm -hmm. the best European. Myself, Breeze Levades. Mm -hmm. So for Europe, it's quite yeah. strong. For Asia, not so strong. I think the second best guy was a guy called Gong Wei Ji. Okay. I'm not sure you would even know him. Mm -hmm. The only thing he's known <coughs> for is he played Peter Gaeta twice and he beat him twice. Mm. So that's but, a good yeah. stat. Yeah. But Chen Jin for sure, the biggest name. Okay, but it's fun that those like uh, World Junior Championships. It's, I mean, for me personally, that was the first time where I saw players like Ginting and Christie and uh, Sunyama. I think you had a really good Shio batch around. Like, mm. I think yeah. Li Zijia was also. I think Li is a bit younger, younger than me. Yeah. I don't. I didn't. I can't remember him participating in the World Juniors. Okay. Um, but uh, Shio Ki as Shio -Ki, well. Yeah. Um, and then some of them, like, they were really good there, but then you never really see them again. Yeah, That's yeah. also super weird. Yeah. I remember this guy from China, one Gu Gupi Lin or something. Lin, yeah. Lin Gupi. Lin. Yeah. Also from India, there was Cyril. Cyril, yeah. yeah. yeah so He's in Denmark now. He's in he Denmark. just moved to Denmark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Interesting. I'm actually gonna play him this year because he's playing. He plays in the second highest league, and I do as well this year. Okay. So I will play him, Cyril. You move around a lot, you guys from India. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah I lost was the maybe before the quarterfinal or maybe the quarterfinal to Cyril Berna. Okay. Are they? You lost to Cyril. I lost to Cyril. Yeah. Okay. I but he also made the final or something. Yeah, yeah he, he, right. he yeah. reached the final and then, then lost the final. He was uh, he had like a bit of a, f- a weird technique. Like it was looked okay. a bit weird, but it was it was working. It's good enough <laughs> to beat me, and he had a very good smash. And uh, yeah. where where is where where he's from? He's from Hyderabad. He trains in Hyderabad. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, he he's he's obviously like older than you. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Also remember like Yuta Matsanabe, Sing Shi Wei, uh, all those guys were like yeah. the same age. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. Do you have yeah, something? Yeah, I just wanted to switch back to talking about something uh, with you because we already been touching on Commonwealth Games, but in general, like this year has been amazing for you. You've made the final of All England. And you made the you won India Open, right? Yeah. You made the final of German Open, beating Victor, which is uh, pretty unbelievable. Like first of all, like how did you do that? Like how did you beat Victor? Uh, like no one else can do it at the moment. So can you tell everyone like h- how to do it? Uh, was that the last time Victor lost? Was that to Lakshya or? Yeah, if you yeah. don't count the walkovers, it is. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, that's a good. But one. yeah, I think I was in a pretty good form in that uh, tournament. Uh, I I played Ginting as well in that tournament mm-hmm. and Pranoy, and then all tough matches and yeah. then. Uh, Tough draw. Tough draw, and then yeah, but w- when I played Victor, uh, yeah, I expected a very good match, and uh, yeah, I, taking the first game, I think I was in uh, a good, uh, good advantage, and then I think third game was pretty close. He was leading by uh, a lot of points, but then I at the end I could cover it up, and then mm. uh, yeah, I think <clears throat> that day I was a. Uh, also a, a bit of luck involved in that no. but yeah i think uh, i was in a really good form that time and then the following week i followed it up with the all england finals where uh, mm. i couldn't beat him again yeah. uh, because <laughs> he, he, it was some uh, different victor playing yeah. <laughs> against he probably me. really wanted his revenge there yeah but do you feel like something has really changed in your game this year compared to last year because i know you also won the bronx in december but like in, if you go from december last year and until now it's like your results has really gone up one or two two uh, steps. So, do you feel like there's something that has changed in your game, or have you just matured? Uh, yeah, what what is the explanation? Uh, I think? feel after uh, COVID happened, uh, and then uh, once I started playing tournaments again, and then uh, those last year's matches which I played in Indonesia or in uh, in Bali for like three weeks, and then the World Championship that gave me a lot of confidence to really perform well uh, in the next season and yeah i was just trying to keep myself fit and uh, i got a lot of belief in my uh, capabilities because mm-hmm. before that i had only won in like challenge level tournaments mm-hmm. or like super 100 yeah. i didn't play much and uh, yeah, i was really frustrated in covid as well that why are there no tournaments when mm-hmm. i can get get into big tournaments and then there are no tournaments to play but yeah, i think that period of uh, a long training and then starting to play the tournaments again that uh, gave me that gave ma- made my game to uh, reach the next level yeah. and my fitness wise or the playing wise and then i think the next year was just to keep myself fit mm-hmm. and i had that confidence going into the matches and uh, i think yeah that that was the key yeah. yeah how did you manage to cope with that corona season I mean, with no tournaments and stuff, because that was tough. Yeah, it was frustrating yeah, it was very, for very sure. Tough. Yeah, w- very uh, tough to be honest. But then uh, I could, in that time, I could uh, get to stay in the academy where mm. we were training. And uh, when there was a, still a lockdown, uh, we mm. could go there six in the morning, train mm. till like eight thirty, because sometimes the cop would come and check around like 9 9 30 oh, okay. so we used to leave <laughs> the hall <laughs> and like, then wow. and then 
yeah and then evenings morning we used to play and then evening we used to just play football or like basketball or mm. do some physical activity yeah. until like we would we would start at like 4 and then finish it off by 6 mm. because we don't we didn't want to switch on the lights okay. so mm. that yeah. anyone would notice that something is going on here so okay. yeah i think that way we managed it pretty well yeah. Uh, yeah. the lockdown the training didn't stop at that time yeah. but yeah, after a point training also became like very boring and yeah. we didn't uh, have anything to look up to but yeah. yeah i think still we could uh, after a year we could manage a yeah. few tournaments and then it was you, very very tough to uh, be honest you didn't pick up like any other uh, like hobbies or something you you spent your time on in the in that period when i was at home tattoos was, perhaps uh yeah tattoos much after <laughs> okay. uh, the everything became much normal but yeah, i think at home just cooking or mm. like cleaning and all yeah. those stuff watched yeah. a lot of movies and if you enjoy cleaning <laughs> i have a house that really needs some help so uh, you're always welcome <laughs> what's your go to uh go to dishes when you're in the kitchen uh i think i i can't cook that well or many dishes but yeah i can make breakfast like eggs and like simple stuff like mm. or maybe a uh, chicken soup and a rice okay. like sim- basic stuff where yeah. uh where i can like survive <laughs> so because i've lived in denmark as well and yeah. that time i learned a lot yeah. and yeah i can make uh, chapati is the indian okay. naan yeah i like th- that that i can the naan bread n- yeah naan not naan but no, like a bit, uh, a bit homemade kind of a uh, bread where it's really uh, like a uh, thin. thin and uh, yeah it tastes much different than naan okay. because yeah. naan you usually get in like hotels and stuff Chapati is that the the crispy one? It's not the crispy no, one. No, not the no, crispy okay. one. But then uh, yeah, it's same completely, same as completely completely flat completely and flat, round. Yeah, yeah round. Okay, okay. So I can make yeah. it round. That's okay. what I'm okay. <laughs> trying to say. Yeah. Because when uh, like my brother and all they cook, it's not always like round. So yeah. I have that skill to make it. <laughs> 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 the crispy, <laughs> crispy one. Round. That's pap- papadom. Papadom. Yeah, yeah papadom. that's papadom. Yeah. Okay. What a, Did what yeah, a I want to ask him something okay, first. Yeah. Did you learn? cooking the eggs from Anas because Anas he's always said that like his soft boiled egg is the best in the world. Have I you mean, ever I had him? a perfect soft boiled? Yeah, you always say <laughs> But that. it's not for me. I haven't taught uh, actually okay. anything. All right. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I thought maybe because he when he stayed in Denmark it was in Aarhus where you're from so maybe you taught him. But, yeah, uh, but I wasn't really in Aarhus at the time. Yeah, I think I, I was in Copenhagen at the time. Okay. But yeah. you, did you stay at my parents' place or just uh, at, at the uh, at the uh, hostel nearby okay. where, where there was yeah. the football ground yeah. and the track? Yeah, mm. so I know where it is. Is the yeah. same place where we played the Thomas Cup this year, right? Just, just around. Just yeah. No, no, just not this no, no. year. I, I, I didn't participate. That that's time, right. Yeah. I forgot you didn't participate there. Oh. Um, but no, that's the same place. It's just like usually when when people come and play for for my club. It's not my club, but the club that I used to represent mm-hmm. in Denmark. Um, they often stay at my parents' place. Okay. Yeah, but then his dad used to cook us food sometimes, yeah. and then our favorite dish was biksamar. Yeah, yeah. biksamar. Yeah, yeah. Biksamar. Biksamar. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very Danish dish. Just yeah, like yeah. some potatoes, meat, meat uh, yeah. this Danish rye bread. Yeah. Um, I actually f- have a tradition here on this hotel. Yeah. yeah. At the Denmark Home, I I used to always order it before I w- I went to to my okay. matches here. Okay. Okay. So w- where do you get the best big samar in this city? I, I don't know, but I should actually ask. You my can mom. get it over here. Okay. You can get okay. it over here. Okay. So you should come to this hotel one of the days and get get big samar. Yeah. yeah. But sure. big samar is really like um, if you have a lot of food from the day. Yeah, leftovers, leftovers from the day before. Oh, okay. You just put it on the pan, right, yeah. and you fry it. Basically, I mean, bixa is isn't that almost like mix? Yeah, it's like mixed, mixed food. Of, It, it's yeah. basically the name is basically mixed food. Mixed food. Yeah. So my my dad cooked food for Laksha. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty. <laughs> cool. And and some f- f- sometimes he cooked Indian curries as well. Like he <laughs> tried to cook. Okay. Uh, He's not Indian able curry. to do that. I'm I'm hundred percent sure. Uh, uh, cannot have been a great experience. Uh, uh, I would like to taste Tony's uh, butter chicken. But, <laughs> but well, not butter chicken. It was just uh, like chicken gravy and okay. uh, yeah. and some rice with that yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was still uh, still close to what we yeah. uh, what you ate at home we ate at home and then uh, <laughs> usually when we travel abroad it, the indian is not like uh, yeah, indian the indian food actual yeah. indian food so yeah. Yeah, it was close to that 
Yeah, I have an Indian neighbor back home where I live, and he's always saying like the Indian food in Denmark it's terrible. <laughs> like if I want Indian food, I should come to his house because his wife is is cooking. But never go to the Indian restaurants. <laughs> he says. Yeah. Maybe next time you are in Bangalore, you can come home and try sure. the, the authentic yeah. Indian food. For sure. Can you make a, a good like butter chicken? I I can tell my mom to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer if, that. If, I prefer if that. If I cook, I think <laughs> that wouldn't wouldn't be presentable at at, <laughs> yeah. at a dinner. Yeah. It's cool. been a long time since I had a good butter chicken and chicken yeah. biryani. All those yeah. dishes, they're very good. Yeah. yeah. So did you uh, did you answer the question about uh, what's really like clicked for you this year? Where the confidence the confidence has been growing but anything in your training your diet like anything you feel like is clicked in 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 particular or uh, i would say a lot of things i was doing from a very uh, long time that helped me mm-hmm. uh, get through this year but yeah i think once i reached that level that mm-hmm. uh, that ranking where i was getting into the big tournaments for me uh, i knew that okay i can play against uh, big players like you or like victor or like uh, lizija uh, and all the other big players for me the key was just to keep myself fit uh, keep my uh, because last year when i played a lot of tournaments uh, i think it gave me a reality check where i was in bali or in uh, World Championship as well when I uh, did well, but yeah, f- since then I knew that okay I can really uh, play with the big guys and uh, and the main thing in the tournament is now to just recover well and mm. just go uh, again a good match next day because no no match is easy uh, in that stage. So biggest thing was just to keep myself fit. Uh, and when you say keep yourself fit, do you mean in good shape or injury free? Yeah, injury free and then peaking at the right time uh, for tournaments where uh, okay. even if I don't do well in a certain tournament like uh, before the before All England uh, when you play the German Open if you're not doing well or uh, you can't take that defeat. Uh, to your heart and then mm-hmm. maybe try and uh, focus everything on the uh, w- the all england or like yeah. the big, big events uh, because that's the main goal that's the main yeah. goal because uh, i think at the end of the day how many tournaments you can win it matters and i think mm-hmm. once you start doing well in the in those tournaments that were as well it gives you a lot of uh, confidence mm-hmm. and uh, Uh, and yeah so i think just mainly trying to peak at the right time and trying to uh, schedule my training towards that and uh, yeah i think la- last one year i have been uh, mm. focusing on that and trying to keep myself injury free yeah. and yeah. are you are you involved in uh, picking the tournaments that you want to play do you do that Yeah, by yourself or together with the coach or uh, together with the coach but then yeah i think they are open to uh, all the discussions and they want me to uh, make the plan make the training sometimes and then uh, choose uh, your tournaments and then so that's okay. with your dad and vimal kumar, vimal kumar and prakash so also or? yeah i think uh, now uh, i do it with uh, vimal kumar sir okay and then uh, also uh, with prakash sir he gives me a lot of in- inputs in uh, he's not regular with the training but then he's uh, uh, in- involved in a lot of uh, other uh, like no not day to day training as such but then a lot of other yeah. inputs he yeah. gives me and with my dad and my uh, vimal kumar sir uh, i make the tournament schedule or the training where i want to train in this period of time like if i want to go there in dubai in this mm. period of time or like train in bangalore yeah. or train somewhere in uh, other place so yeah i love so, the way you always put that sir in at the end right so you say vimal kumar yeah. sir and Prakash uh, Paragunas, sir. sir. I, I like that. I, we should start using that when we talk yeah. about Kenneth. So say Kenneth, sir. Uh, well, like Ken, it's Kenneth, just a great Kenneth Sang, like the Ken Japanese song, yeah. one. Kenneth Sang. It's a great way of respect. <laughs> I just, I, I really enjoyed when you say it. Anyway, you were going to ask something. I just wanted to say. Yeah. That. So, yeah. so, so also about the 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 the, the training. Um, so you're also very invo- involved in uh, what do you want to do in to your work. training sessions. Yeah. Okay. 
That, yeah, that's I think that's not cool. that's quite unusual, right, for the Asian style. I think the Asian style is much more, much more just listen to what the coach says and like follow them. I think it's more European style actually to be a bit talk. more involved yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But I really like, I mean, all the things that you talk about from your <clears throat> from your upbringing. I mean, since you were very young, you were sent to certain places to try out different stuff. Um, you are very involved with the tournament schedule with. Um, your own development in terms of what you want to practice and stuff. So I actually really like um, what your coaches has been doing with you, like giving you quite a lot of freedom, freedom yeah. to 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 go and figure some things out yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important skill yeah. to master to be like quite independent and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, they have uh, I've had worked with a lot of different kinds of uh, coaches and. Uh, with Morton sir as well, I think uh, that period, that time, uh, I really improved a lot uh, playing under him. And then I think uh, I think there's a few uh, people out there who don't know who you're talking about when you say Morton. So uh, can you just uh, yeah, M Morton Frost, Morton uh, Frost yeah. from the Dan Danish legend, Danish, yeah, yeah. Uh, legend, and yeah. he he used to play with my coach like Vimal sir or. Prakasa, so they uh, they are really uh, close in that. So I I had this opportunity to train under him for uh, I think it was a contract for two years, but then due to COVID, it was only for like one and a half year. Mm. So but then yeah, I improved a lot uh, playing under him, and uh, yeah, I think all uh, those I think the idea of uh, like training is like very similar to form like Vimal sir or Prakash sir, mm. uh, very similar to the European way because yeah. uh, Vimal, Vimal Kumar sir, I think he has uh, stayed in England for five years and then even uh, Prakash Padukun sir has lived in Denmark uh, for yeah. uh, uh, six years, I would say. And yeah, he, was training he plays here. in the club, uh, played in the club Pro that I'm in now actually, yeah. Vidal. Hidal. Yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah, I think the, the thought process and uh, the way of training and way of thinking i, th I think yeah. qu quite similar to what yeah. european yeah. people yeah. do it's quite yeah. fascinating actually i think it, it sounds like you've found a really good mix of uh, of it all yeah. but I, I still think we are doing it like very much only european style right we haven't really taken in a lot of oh, i mean you, you you see uh, quite a lot of uh, chinese coaches in denmark yeah. Um, yeah, that's true that's true but that's basically it. You yeah. don't really see like the Indonesian, Japanese, no. uh, Indian. You don't really see that a lot. And I would still say with the Chinese coaches, like if they're in a club, it's still the European style of training that, that yeah. you would do mostly in the club, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I've yeah. been working quite a lot with a Chinese coach, uh, Shang. Shang, I know. You know uh, him? Yeah? I, I, I was staying in Arus yeah. and uh, we used to train uh, twice in a week with him. Yeah. And we used to do the Lindan multi, <laughs> which he ca yeah, calls he it. Like that. Uh, yeah. that uh, Lindan yeah. multi. So yeah, I think uh, he's a cool it's guy. Still a very, very European kind yeah. of training yeah. uh, mm. under him. Where he's also been in Denmark for like, for like yeah. thirty years or yeah. thirty-five years, something yeah. crazy like that. So uh, yeah, maybe he's uh, adopted uh, some, <laughs> yeah. some Danish, yeah. Uh, yeah. some Danish stuff. Um, oh, there was one thing that I wanted to uh, wanted to say. Now I forgot it. Ah. That that annoys me. I can't help. I can do oh. my own. Let's just cut this part out, guys. I I would like to ask you. Yeah, ask sure, you, sure. Yeah, Fire away. Uh, like, you guys have been coming for PBL or India. I think. What is the best thing you like about India? I think for me, actually, the cheese naan. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say the food. I love food. the food. Okay. I love Indian food, and uh, I would also agree that it's very different in India compared to uh, in Denmark. Indian. But I still think Indian food in Denmark is good as well. Okay. Uh, but I was never part of the PBL. Oh. I've only played uh, like Thomas Cup in India and India Open uh, and Sayed Modi uh, a few times, um, and I have never really experienced like huge crowds or okay. amazing atmosphere. I think that has been better in PBL. So PBL. I think you have like probably a different experience of India because every time I've been there the atmosphere has actually been a little bit uh, dull or uh, okay. yeah a little bit uh, the times I've played unless Sina or Sindhu has been on court then the crowd yeah, has yeah. really been yeah. yeah on fire I think what's for me what's fascinating about India is uh, it's just the total opposite of Denmark it's mm. so different I mean yeah, in, in any way yeah. um, and that's su super super fun to experience 
Uh, I mean, Denmark is a very small country with like six million people. How many is in India? I think more than a billion. More or than something. a billion. One, more than a billion. One point three billion. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and air, that's it, counted. I think uncounted it would be much yeah, more. Even more. Yeah, yeah. You have just, no idea how many people there yeah. actually are. Yeah. It's just um, it's just super different. Uh, but it's it's been very fun to experience every time I've been out there. Um, I also have a few good experience the pbl was super fun yeah um i didn't really knew what to expect um but it was actually very very fun um the rules were fun it was nice to there was badminton on the television every single day so if you had a day off you could just turn on the television and 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 watch some uh, some good badminton and and this whole like uh, with a with a trump card trump card yeah that was super fun (laughs) as well um you know what that is yeah i've i've watched it you're you're okay okay cool so but yeah, yeah, I think like just a simple thing, like the fact that cows walk around on the streets. <laughs> and, yeah. like and the it, tuk-tuks. Yeah, it, yeah like it's tuk-tuk. so different from what, yeah. what we get in Denmark. So I think any day that goes to India for the first time and they see that, they will just take notice and think like, what what's going on here? Like it's Suddenly it's so the traffic different. stops and yeah. what's going on? Oh, there's a cow. That's we need crazy. to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... Yeah. It, it just doesn't different. happen here. It but I will say here. in Denmark, there's horses on the road sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. That's actually but, quite but weird as well. Like wild horses, you no, wouldn't no, really no, see no, that. No, no, wild horses. So no, no, no. a guy on a girl on a horseback, right? But yeah. like in India, it's more like a, a cow just walking <laughs> around. Like no, and, no and one then, owns it or anything. Like and then a lot of street dogs as well. Like yeah, true. Street That's dog. not my favorite. I don't like the street, street dogs. Do- okay. yeah. I'm a bit scared, scared if they're going yeah. to bite because, or Because uh, sometimes when they uh, people treat them like badly, or mm. so then they become angry or yeah. something, and then they can attack you. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes, so you just have to be careful around the street dogs. Yeah. Have you ever tried something like that? No, but uh, like if you give them food, they are uh, they are your best friends. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. yeah. So whenever you have something leftovers and uh, so, where, where I live, and then where we train uh, in the academy, and then they have rooms and hostels over mm. there. So there are a lot of street dogs. Whenever you come, you just feed them, and yeah. so they are good to you. <laughs> <laughs> you always have and a bit they, of snacks they, in your pockets. Yeah, and then they remember you. So yeah. Yeah. one thing that's also fun about uh, the Indian culture is. Um, that you always show up a bit late. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're always late. Yeah. Um, actually, when we when we picked you up to do this uh, podcast, we picked you up at, at your hotel, and we were like five minutes late or something. And I was like, should I text him? Ah, no, he's from yeah. India. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's probably not even even there himself. But you were on time. Um, what else? I mean, the traffic, the tuk-tuks is super tuk-tuk. fun to drive around in. Um, yeah, tuk-tuks are easy to go if you're in the city. Mm. Yeah. So they have like, uh, they can go anywhere. And yeah. then you have yeah. to, when you're driving, you have to be careful of tuk-tuks because anywhere they, they can, can show like, up from anywhere, show, any angle. Cut short or like yeah. the bikes, you have to. Uh, yeah. Can you drive a tuk-tuk? Or uh, do you need like a special license for that? Or I don't think so. That It's like a scooter basically yeah. with a... Uh, with a two wheel behind mm, and then yeah. one wheel yeah. in front so it's as similar to driving a scooter and okay. but then yeah it, it, it's a responsibility when uh, yeah. because sometimes when you take turns uh, like quick turns and then the tuk tuk is not very heavy to mm. control so it can like fall yeah. this side or the other side but otherwise it's very, super easy to drive a yeah. tuk tuk so what what is like a, what is like a normal day off in india what do you go and do in india like uh like go out with friends to because where i play cards or go out go out go out go out with friends uh, maybe for a movie or some place to eat and then play playstation at home Uh, so what's your favorite game Uh, fifa fifa okay okay which team do you play with uh i love manchester city okay oh they lost today yeah, yeah they lost it. to liverpool yeah. oh, oh. I, I didn't see zero the match. one huh yeah yeah zero yeah. one yeah. Yeah. yeah okay Haaland didn't deliver no he didn't he didn't <laughs> <clears throat> that's a shame yeah well but it's going good for man city in yeah, general so going well uh, yeah <laughs> i think they have uh, 
the man now <laughs> yeah i'll know is scoring three goals every match do you think anas looks like him he gets yeah, his, a lot of his, messages his, about his it. hairstyle is like uh, similar uh, similar the hairstyle is is kind of similar, similar. the the results on court are the, not similar at the moment uh, not <laughs> at all no no not at all but then uh, how do you manage that long hair man <laughs> <laughs> so it's to be honest it's super annoying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i don't know i've been i've been thinking about cutting it uh, like a lot recently especially in the summertime and it was super warm oh, yeah. um so i always have to wear like a cap or like set it up to to hold mm. it but uh yeah you, you should, ch- I, you should I, try i, I try remember I, i did did it once uh when i where i played the denmark open with my long hair i yeah. think i played you yeah uh, and i didn't cut my hair for like 10 months mm. and it was grown till here mm. but then it was messy all around and it uh, was being too hard for me to yeah. uh, manage it and then uh, like just cut it off cut it it's off. it's yeah. definitely uh, more convenient just to have short hair yeah. i mean i'm not sure if i would recommend it but it's also like it is taking me so long to get the <laughs> to long hair i yeah. mean it's been like two years in in yeah. in the making so if i cut it off now it's like now i'll have to start all over again yeah, that's yeah. tough that it? that would be tough yeah. but hans christian has the same haircut like ever since he was yes four years old or yeah. something, <laughs> something like that something like that <laughs> no yeah. change i had the i dyed it completely black when i was like 13 but like since okay. then i i think it's been it's been the same basically try to do that again that i've actually also good. once like shaved my head yeah i remember yeah. that yeah, yeah. That that okay was, so it's that not completely ugly. true that was ugly it's not completely no, close true. to close to close enough. are we going to play the pbl this year or what's going on uh, not sure not sure okay. like but <clears throat> some of them are saying it it's happening but then some of them are saying it's not happening but mm-hmm. then uh, the au- auction should have happened by now mm-hmm. so okay. i i i think it's a very uh, low possibility for okay. this year to happen yeah. but okay. i i wish that it happens because i think after the ton- uh, the i think the thomas cup mm-hmm. and the other uh, tournaments which happened i think if it happens now i think it's the best time for mm. uh, badminton to pick up in uh, india because uh, i know uh, a lot of people ask me this uh, in india as well uh, when is that pbl happening because all the other leagues have started and then mm. i think a lot of people have uh, shown interest in badminton in uh, recent times so i think it's it will uh, make sense with the thomas cup win as well yeah, that they yeah. kind of try to build on that momentum it's pretty crazy that we, when we mentioned like you had a great year we didn't even mention no. winning thomas no, cup no, so that also that says one. a bit about like how good your year has actually been there's yeah. a lot of good results to take from yeah no but do you have a team that you play for every single time or do you switch teams for the pbl i think it's a auction where okay, i think yeah. anyone can buy you and yeah. uh, you have to play for them but i would prefer that uh, if we have s- something like uh, there is it in denmark that you play for a club and then uh, you, you can play again for him because yeah. in pbl it's not up to you uh, yeah. where do you want to play because it goes in the auction and whoever gives uh, better money i think yeah. you get sold to that team and then you have to play so i But feel it's also quite fun that auction yeah, thing yeah, yeah that auction thing makes it more exciting mm. and uh, yeah but yeah at the same time i would have loved to play for bangalore bangalore <laughs> raptors is that the yeah, name bangalore right? raptors yeah. or like if any other city if i can play two three seasons yeah. Uh, with them i think that relationship also yeah. uh, it's easier so to build like a connection, connection with the fans with and the, the fans, club yeah. and everything that way for sure for sure we lost to bangalore in the final when i was there okay. who did you play for i played from uh, mumbai mumbai rockets. mumbai rockets yeah rockets yeah that was my team yeah i remember some of the name hyderabad hunters hunters yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. cool names pune seven aces, aces. Yeah. Yeah. who else delhi smashers ahmedabad yeah. warriors ahmedabad warriors yeah okay yeah. delhi dashers or delhi something. dashers that's yeah. true that's true That was yeah, fun. Let's man. let's hope that it will come back uh, yeah. in maybe not this year. Hopefully this year. Maybe yeah, some of the because I think next year some of them might not play because of Olympic qualifications mm. and yeah, uh, yeah that makes true. sense. True. So that yeah, I think th- this year it's the best time for yeah. them to. Yeah. So uh long term and short term, Laksha, what's like uh what what's what's the what's the goals for you? Uh I would you're say you're young. You're on I mean, you're on a good streak. 
what's the goals i think short term i would say i have a really good chance in qualifying for the year end finals mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah i will try to do well uh, in the coming tournaments the european tournaments and then long term i would say just try to uh, remain injury free and then uh, paris is will be uh, my target Go. and also uh, qualifying for that will be a, a a uh, important task for me to qualify uh, and have a good ranking in the uh, draw you didn't qualify for tokyo right? yeah i didn't it's yeah. uh, actually either. pretty crazy like i feel like it's not that long ago and like now you're one of the, like top guys so it it just feels crazy you weren't part of uh, yeah the london games it's been a quick rise i feel like yeah. i mean you've always been like a very talented talented player and one that we have been talking about looking up looking yeah looking out for but uh, I mean your rise the last 12 months has been like yeah, rapid, rapid so uh, yeah, I agree it's been good and uh, it would be interesting to play you like a million more times in the yeah. upcoming years I lost the last time so uh, I have a revenge you also <laughs> lost I guess yeah I still, have a, I still I still won more than I lost but okay so I just hope I don't have to play him yeah, again. that's good that's good um but yeah. well we have been on for like 75 minutes so uh and it's a bit late here yeah. in Odense, to Denmark and you just arrived uh earlier today so I just want to say thank you so much yeah. for taking the time it was amazing yeah it's been a, it's been a very very good episode and to the people watching thank you so much for doing that Um, if you haven't done it already, please remember to subscribe to the channel, The Banter Experience. Leave a like on this video. Leave a comment in the comment comment section. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Anything yeah. else here? And yeah, th- thank you so much for inviting me. Of course. And of course. Uh, yeah, now I'm a lucky fan that <laughs> I get to <laughs> speak in the badminton experience. We yeah. are working on getting, I mean, some some merch. So okay. so we'll have some T-shirts for <laughs> for the guests, but we don't have that by now. But yeah. uh, at some point, if we get it. Uh, we'll give it to I, you. I think I mean, now <laughs> <laughs> pe- people will start investing so that uh, it gets bigger uh, this uh, podcast gets hopefully bigger. hopefully yeah but uh, yeah thanks so much thanks so thanks much, much for for joining lecture yeah and thank you so uh, much. good night guys bye